Hello my friends and welcome. The main hotspot for today is Avdiivka. It seems like after New Year's celebration, Russia decided to concentrate many of the forces and start the massive attack on Ukrainian positions. Mostly it is happening on the north from Avdiivka in Stepova and also near to Vesele. Let's check out the timeline. So it was yesterday and it is today Russia took this part of the ground, including the tree line. Also, we have the information about the Russian advancement from Vesela in this forest line. You may see many of the Russian attack vectors on this map, but I would say that the main one for them is near to Stepova. Also, the attack which goes to the industrial part, to the power plant, which is located in this place. And over here, those two are the most tricky for Ukrainian army. Since their aim is to take control over this very important crossroad, which is mainly the only supply road for Ukraine. Even though Russia took few meters of the ground today, but mainly their attack was a big failure again. We have a fresh drone video of the Russian advancement. Again, they use many of the forces, the convoy of the armored vehicles. The first one was kaboomed probably with the help of the mine. The Russian convoy continued its move, but the second vehicle also was kaboomed at the same spot, so two of the vehicles were stacked at the same place. And the third vehicle was also targeted, probably this time it was the FPV drone. One vehicle tried to escape, but was targeted on the way back to the Russian positions. It is just a single Russian attack attempt in Avdivka. Today there were many and I think most of them went according to this scenario. I posted this video on my Telegram group. I guess that this is the Beam P2, the Russian one. It was caputed with the help of the Bradley mine and also drone fire all together. It shows that Ukraine has all the means to protect the area. The bad thing that still we are in lack of the proper in-ground defense like trenches, dots and anti-tank barricades. It would help Ukraine to save more lives. But as I told you, it's already late to build those in Avdivka region because Avdivka is very close to the front lines and Russia would fire to engineering equipment right away. So it's dangerous to dig down. So all of the trenches that are available there are digged down by our soldiers. And those are obviously less robust compared to the proper engineering made trenches. The FPV drones continue to play a great role in this war. For example, this was the Russian big artillery system Gwazdika that was eliminated with the help just a single drone that cost not more than $500. And yeah, the soldiers were running away and there was the big kaboom in the place. As you understand, Ukraine moved mostly to total defense, but nevertheless, the defense is also very successful for Ukraine because our army kills Russians severe losses, many more compared to Ukrainian side, and it is good. Here we have the picture from Mayakovsk 73. He says that Russia definitely took some of the ground in this place. We have the confirmation about it also from the deep state military map as I showed you. But he also says that Russia propels from this direction. It is something new. This is the new direction of attack for the Russian army. Still, this area is far away from the industrial part, from the factory. So Russia will struggle to cross the river and many of the lakes to reach the factory. It means that the most tricky part is over here for Ukraine, but recently Russia has no advancement there. And this is the place where Russia lost those vehicles that I showed you on the drone video, so you may see the symbols of the Russian vehicles burning in the place. To get Stepova under control, Russia has already wasted hundreds of the armored vehicles and tanks, but still incapable to reach this place. The Russian military bloggers said a couple of weeks ago that Russia took Stepova under control, but no, it didn't happen like that. Well, we understand that if Russia continue to gather more and more resources, finally they might take this village, they might take even Avdivka. We should be prepared for this scenario, especially in our general Commander Zaluzhny said that probably Russia might take Avdivka in two or three months. It means 
February or March. What can I say? Ukraine does its best in the current situation with the current resources. And the only scenario for Ukrainian army is to go for defense. That's it. Today Russia also lost the Buk air defense system, the modernized version of it, Buk M2. Firstly, this photo was published on the internet. It's not understandable whether it's just a cloud or the Buk system which was caputed, but later on we received this photo clearly it is the book air defense system for the last months russia lost many of those around 10. All right, what else do we have is the update of the situation in Kurdumovka. Kurdumovka is located on the south from the Bakhmut area. Before Ukraine tried to assault towards this village, our guys, as you can see, are still very close to it. But now Russia took the initiative in the sector, so they advanced a little over here, expanding the gray area. So yesterday and today, still they're not able to take this under control, but the fight area expanded. So just for you to understand, here is the area where Russia advanced today and this is the Bahamut city over here. This is Klishivka. Russia still struggles to get it under control. And this is the map from the other source. You can see that definitely Russia went there using just their infantry. There was a big interview of Vladimir Zelensky to The Economist just after the new year and he spoke about the perspectives for Ukraine and the current situation. Zelensky admitted that Ukraine wasn't able to achieve all of the goals the last year but the feeling that Putin wins is just the feeling I would agree with that because Putin is still not capable to reach his goals his army just ruined in attempt to take in the small villages on the front lines if it continues like that Putin would get rid of his army once again no matter how big russian resources are but if they continue to waste them like they waste right now the victory for them even the small victory is not possible zelensky also said what happens if putin wins in ukraine he said that he is like an animal he would taste the victory and will eat you on the dinner together with european union nato freedom and democracy well most of the countries of the european union agree that we shouldn't let putin win all except maybe hungary if putin wins it would be a very big threat for other countries for sure and if zelensky calls putin an animal it means that there will be no any kind of the negotiations between between him and Putin. About the negotiations, Zelensky says that there is no any fundamental step forward towards the peaceful deal with Russia. If Russia sends the signals that they are ready to freeze the war, it only means that they are in lack of the military resources and they need them to continue the war. So in the current situation, Vladimir Zelensky says that the ceasefire will play a great favor for Russia. Zelensky stated that the war in Crimea would be the hottest spot of this war in general. He didn't specify it or say any kind of the details about it. The closest goal for Ukraine is to secure Kharkiv, Dnieper, Zaporizhia, Kherson and Mykolaiv. So maybe Zelensky thinks that Russia might assault on Kharkiv and Dnieper and Zaporizhia Parisia again together with Kherson, but I think that the assault on Kherson from the Russian side is not possible. Well, indeed, the situation for Ukraine is difficult in 2024, more difficult, I would say, compared to 2023. There, at least, we had some of the hope with all of the military supplies, and people in general were very encouraged by 2022, then Ukraine got lots of the territories back from the Russian occupation. Also, news for today that Canada agreed to send more of the air defense systems to Ukraine and missiles for them. How many would be supplied to Ukraine? We are out of the number, but the deal was already signed. Also, Norway agreed to make an exclusion for Ukraine for their military supplies because usually they do not sell weaponry or do not send weaponry to the conflict country. And Ukraine is obviously the part of the conflict with Russia. But here they voted for the direct military support of Ukraine, probably also with the air defense systems. 
Olsen. Kind of the interesting article from the Times. They say that Europe, together with Great Britain, are thinking the way out for the Ukrainian support in case Trump wins the elections in 2024 and would say no to the military support of Ukraine. Officials in Europe and UK agreed that we shouldn't let Putin win. It means that the military support of Ukraine will continue, doesn't matter who is in the White House. Yes, Ukraine might lose the big part of the support from the United States, but it will still have it from the other countries. In this scenario, Ukraine will obviously not be able to perform big assault operations taking the ground back. But the main thing that it will not lose, because according to the British intelligence, Russia is in lack of the resources for the huge assaults as well. The focus for Ukraine in 2024 is the defense only. But the war will continue reaching 2025 and probably further. According to the Real Clear Politics poll, Trump has has plus 2.4 percent compared to Joe Biden. So he is leading now, but a little and still a long time to wait till election. So everything might change. Definitely the elections in the United States are always unpredictable. But in any case, Ukraine will not lose and it's awesome. The Telegraph says that we need more of the missiles for our air defense systems because after the recent Russian attacks, it is understandable that the current resources are not enough to defend Ukraine. Maybe that is why we see the intentions from Canada and Norway to help Ukraine with the air defense. The Ukrainian Special Services showed this video today. It is the new modification of the drone boats and they are now equipped with the rocket artillery systems. You may see that the boat fires some of the missiles towards the positions, maybe the Russian positions. We already spoke with you before about this possible modification. I wonder if it works effectively or not, because I don't think that it's very precise. Nevertheless, it might cause some of the damages to the Russian ships. And here we go with the satellite image near to the Kerch Bridge. You can see that Russia restored the barricades or barriers which they used to stop the drone boats' attacks. All of those barriers were destroyed by the storm in the Azov Sea. Well, still you can see some of the gaps, but I think Russia might deploy some of the boats with machine guns to conquer the drone boats. We may see that the bridge is some sort of protected. Not sure if this protection works by 100%. About the yesterday's attack on the Russian officers and propaganda journalists in Donetsk. Well, so far we are out of the name of who was targeted out there. During the New Year's night, Russia arrested hundreds of migrants in Moscow and St. Petersburg. The goal of those arrests is to check if those migrants already have obtained the Russian citizenship. If they did, they go to the Russian army. If they didn't, they go back to their home countries like Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, simply being deported. Russia has increased the production of the Sohoi 57 fighter jet. For now they have 13 of them and they plan to expand this number to 26. Well, it could be difficult for Russia to do because many of the parts for this fighter jet are being produced in the Western countries, but we understand that somehow they still may get the spare parts for their military, mostly using the dark schemes via the third countries. All right, it seems like Ukraine has obtained the artillery shells from India. Well, at least this is 155 millimeter shell. It looks very similar to the Indian one. Well, I could be wrong, but I got this information in the comparison on the Russian websites. They say that this one is from India. Well, why not? If it is true, it is awesome. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video. If you do so, you help a lot to my channel. And also, if you want to support my job, you may check some of the links in the video description just below. Thank you so much for your awesome support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.